Hello. Yeah, very good morning to all. We are in the fourth day actually this hour of, and uh, I one by one I hope you people are joining. So very good morning to all for my this Indian colleagues and as well as uh, maybe good evening for those who joined from from abroad. So today I'll be talking about uh, this another species. Uh, yesterday there was a discussions about these Hilsa species. Now today we'll be talking about this uh, sardine species. So let us directly uh, go to the slide and uh, let me start the sessions regarding this uh, sardine, Indian oil sardine actually. Yesterday, I have given you about a brief uh, descriptions about this uh, Hilsa species, which was anadromous in, in nature, uh, again a Cleopidae from the family of Cleopidae. So today I will be giving on the sardine. So Indian oil sardine. So popularly, uh, this is very popular species uh, in uh, major India and majority of the pelagic catch comes from the southwest coast southwest coast means malabar coast karnataka kerala region and uh, here in this uh, left panel of the box you can see in the red i have highlighted the uh, area so this is the karnataka kerala region where the species is uh, maximum species are found however there are reports that presently actually based on the uh, landing data we can see in east coast also these species are there and in the northern latitudes also of uh, India that means in the Gujarat region also and West Bengal, Odisha West Bengal coast also some uh, actually catches are also what is the justifications of uh, the shipment of uh, these species happens from south of uh, the Indian coast to the northern part that is there are also several studies are there so i'll just uh, give you the brief about the studies wh which we are concerned mostly for the uh, upwelling zones of kerala karnataka malabar region the south west coast of uh, india that means the southeast uh, part of the arabian sea so you can see this species in the right side so this is a very uh, uh, this is a small fish uh, pelagic and uh, mostly uh, artisanal fishermen are also uh, targeting this species for fishing so about the species the landing of indian oil sardine the uh, this is sardinella longiceps it is again from the cleopidae uh, family and uh, along the southeastern Arabian Sea are nearly about 43.8 percent. So, what is the total catch of the tot Indian coast? Mostly, it is coming from the southeastern Arabian Sea. Now, the annual landing of this species is actually uh, we cannot predict. Actually, that there is a main problem. So, it exhibits a large scale of variability with a prolonged years of surplus some years are huge uh, landings are observed and uh, or the deficits landings are observed in some uh, years so we are not at all aware of uh, these uh, findings so what is the reasons so if there is a scope of uh, development of predictive cap capabilities so that is uh, will be a great help to the fishermen because they are not at all uh, aware that whether uh, this year these landings will be more but there there are based on the uh, some uh, landing center is clear that some years actually sardin catch will be more again some year there will be drop that year a mackerel catch may be high and next year again it will be but uh, that is actually there are no robust uh, methodology of uh, predictions so uh, which is operational in nature so there are many uh, good work done by several scientists from the years actually 
so that is the work to predict but that is to how to predict but it is not operationally yet so uh, the reasons several uh, scientists has given several uh, reasons so in this uh, presentations mainly i'll concentrate some of the uh, work actually which is uh, done in the um, uh, past and recent years so uh, what about the landing details how it fluctuates and what are the probable causes so this is uh, a brief idea about the species in the southeast coast uh, south west coast of uh, india that i'll be discussing uh, here in this uh, lecture so from this plot uh, so it is clear that uh, 1960 to 2020 there are uh, the landing details about these species here you can see huge spikes are there so some years actually good amount of uh, fishes are there with lot of spikes some uh, year this is actually the uh, magnitude is uh, very low so this this uncertainty is actually uh, leading fishermen uh, to a uh, leading fishermen to a problem uh, and uh, livelihood is not secure so there is a squeef the predictability can be predictive capability can be developed so it will be a great help so we are seasonal variability what are the reasons of this seasonal variability as well as yearly variability Any, anyone can confirm that uh, whether slides are visible or not? There is a small technical problem actually. Uh, I understand that uh, slides are uh, not visible Pardon, there is a problem in technical problem. We are just trying to uh, solve it. I understand that uh, slides are not visible. Slides are not visible. Please, uh, 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 we are checking with our technical team. So, uh, please bear with us.
anyone coming? Is it visible now? Is it visible? Anyone can confirm in the chat box whether these lights are visible or not? See the slide. Please uh, comment uh, in the um, chat box actually whether you can able to see the slide now or not. Can you put a comment there? Yes, uh, slides are visible, on, sir. Is it visible now? <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry for this uh, technical problem actually. Uh, I think now uh, the slides are visible so please put your comment whether you are able to uh, see the slide or not. Okay then uh, sorry for this problem uh, trouble actually. So again uh, I'll start from the inception actually this is the Indian oil sardine uh, fishery about uh, this uh, Indian's perspective actually I'll be talking about today. So it is uh, mostly found uh, in this very popular species in the uh, uh, southeast, uh, southwest coast of India, uh, mainly Karnataka, Kerala region actually and uh, here in the left panel you can see I have highlighted these two in a red uh, box actually. So this area, this fish is very much popular 
and uh, these species are nowadays available earlier it was mostly repeated, uh, reported in the southern uh, latitude only but uh, nowadays uh, it is also reported in the northern uh, latitude of uh, indian coast also so in gujarat and west bengal also west bengal odisha region also these species um, actually nowadays available so there are several uh, reasons uh, for this many uh, scientist has uh, pointed out different uh, different reasons behind that uh, so but uh, this uh, very good work also done uh, in india so nowadays uh, uh, these species are very much popular uh, these species uh, is edible species as well as it is very much popular in uh, this uh, fish meal or uh, oil for, from fish oil preparation also so uh, indian oil sardine uh, in uh, kerala and karnataka uh, uh, artisanal fishermen are also uh, targeting this species that's why the livelihood is uh, very much dependent uh, on this species and the dwindling stock and unpredicted uh, stock stock now suppose what is the problem today uh, this year actually the catch is good next year there may be no catch so this uh, actually um, fluctuations in landing is uh, really problematic so to predict uh, to secure this uh, artisanal uh, fishermen's livelihood it is very much important now uh, i'll be talking about uh, this species today and uh, it will be the this is the slide which is giving the uh, little bit brief about this species the landing of the indian oil sardine this species name is sardinella longiceps scientific name it belongs to clupidae form uh, clupidae family along the southeastern arabian solar and are about 43 0.8 percent of the total in this south eastern uh, arabian sea uh, mostly uh, this productions happens 43.8 nearly about 50 percent of the total landing occurs here the annual landing of this species ex exhibits a large scale of variability with prolonged year of surplus some years are a huge pro uh, production huge landings and some years are deficit of landings this is the uh, these fluctuations uh, need to be addressed and uh, understanding of this fluctuation is very much important from long time in india various scientists uh, has studied this uh, aspect and given several uh, reasons but uh, the uh, prediction operational prediction system is still uh, uh, missing so with the knowledge of uh, the sci uh, scientist uh, what are already available in the literature uh, if there is a possibility to develop a prediction system so that will be a great help great help to the fishermen those who are targeting this oil sardine now what are the drivers uh, to understand these fluctuations very well actually the drivers need to be identified so what are what are the drivers uh, in annual scale it is very much important to understand uh, what are the processes involved with this and what are the remote forcings involved with this and also uh, in temporal scale uh, seasonal seasonal variability need to be understood uh, very well actually so once uh, these uh, things are addressed now uh, as lot of uh, uh, researcher has worked in this field lot of knowledges are available and the, with this knowledge actually whether there are, um, is a possibility to develop a operational forecasting system operation prediction system that is the main concern uh, actually nowadays now uh, i'll give uh, the brief about this uh, global scenario so here the southeast arabian sea is one of the major upwelling zones this is the um, uh, graphical presentations of a global chlorophyll surface chlorophyll information the surface chlorophyll a from 1998 to 2000 this is the average product and with the help of this uh, one of the major upwelling zones and uh, California, Canary, Humboldt, uh, then Bengalia and uh, these seas, uh, Southeastern Arabian Sea 
is one of the major upwelling zones of which is in our Ara Arabian Sea actually. This sea is very much uh, important, Southeastern Arabian Sea and uh, the upwellings uh, are very much uh, um, uh, important and during the summer monsoon these upwellings are more. So we will be discuss further about this upwelling zones and uh, this is a very good graphical representations of the upwelling from the chlorophyll A image which is taken from satellite and it is a average product from 1998 to 2000. So uh, there is a very good work done uh, uh, by uh, Dr. Smita et al. Uh, he, is, he is again uh, one scientist from uh, MOES, uh, there is a center in uh, Kerala, uh, Center for Marine um, Resource uh, um, Living. It is a MOES, as a CMLRE, popularly known as CMLRE. Uh, and uh, she has worked about the upwelling zones uh, and what are the uh, characteristics of these upwelling zones. I uh, will uh, be discussing here further. So now you, you can see this is the box, uh, there are three boxes actually in the southern past part of the uh, Kerala. So this is, it starts from the southern part, so it is 1 degree, it is 1 degree nearly about uh, 6 and 7 degree uh, latitude band. 7 degree latitude band, this one uh, box is here, then there is a second box which is uh, nearly about uh, uh, 7 point high, half, uh, 7.5 to third box is starting from 9 to 15 so degree la latitude band and uh, the schematic representations of different upwelling zones classified according to the uh, formations mechanism as well as intensive intensity arrows along the coast arrows along the coast means here these arrows these arrows are along the coast uh, depicts uh, <coughs> represent the coastal actually kelvin waves these are the kelvin waves now here you can see there is a contour bathymetry contour the first contour is 200 meter contour then the second contour is 1000 meter and the third one is 2000 meter so as per the uh, literature uh, available so most of the species is dwelling in this self break uh, region and the fishermen are fishing in this uh, continental self area up to the self break only these species migrates after that this species is going offshore so there are very less uh, uh, informations available beyond this offshore uh, region so now oh, if we are checking this uh, uh, physics structure of this upwelling zone so you can see the arrows along the west which is coming from right from the bay of bengal and entering to the arabian sea these are the uh, kelvin waves actually these Kelvin waves are coming from the uh, Arabian Sea, Bay of Bengal and entering in the uh, Arabian Sea. Westward directed, here are some uh, few uh, actually arrows you can see. These are the uh, Rossby waves. Westward directed black arrows depict Rossby waves. The phase velocity, the phase velocity of these Rossby waves are different from equator uh, towards north it is the phase velocity is decreasing so from down to uh, from south to north when we are moving the phase velocity of this uh, rossby waves is decreasing so what happens in these three boxes actually uh, we uh, have uh, i have uh, discussed about the latitude uh, uh, extent of this first box uh, so this is nearly about the 6.5 to 7.5 or nearly about 8 so where actually mostly upwelling at an area is strongly driven by wind so this is the area where actually upwellings are driven by wind however there is a box in this two second box uh, this is a shadow zone with weak wind driven upwelling actually the wind driven uh, weak upwelling is there now the third box uh, is the upwelling at area uh, three is the result of remote forcing so results are here remote forcing impacts are there and as well as winds are the uh, uh, and which is actually 
triggering the upwelling here. Now in continuations with the earlier slide, I will give you a little uh, more uh, about uh, the same area which is from the 8 degree north to 9 degree north represents the shadow zone. So these zones are basically shadow zones to the influencing I mentioned you earlier also remote forcing uh, to the influence of remote forcing. Remote forcing uh, influence is very less observed in this region. Moderate to relative intense upwelling occurs uh, the Kollam. Kollam area is from the 9 <coughs> degree north to 13 degree north. So from this 9 degree north actually here is the 9 degree north to 13 degree degree north mm, this upwelling relatively intense upwelling observed in this uh, region due to the combined action of uh, long uh, shore wind stress and the coastal trapped Kelvin waves and the offshore propagating. So three things are acting in this particular area. So long shore wind stress is acting then the coastal uh, trapped Kelvin waves which is coming from the Bay of Bengal and it is uh, also very active in this region as well as the uh, westward uh, the Rossby waves are propagating towards the west. So these three regions are, uh, are impacting hugely and it is actually triggering the uh, upwelling in this particular area. However, when we are going further to the north, 13 degree north towards the 15 degree north means uh, uh, when we are just uh, called Mangalore above Mangalore region. So again upwelling is weak due to weak wind stress. When we are moving towards the north wind stress and uh, this is going uh, to re reduce and uh, closely confined that that wind stress is very closely confined uh, towards the coast. So uh, that is what again uh, actually upwelling is decreasing in that particular uh, region which is 13 degree north to 15 degree north. So I think uh, now I have given you uh, from uh, a, a brief idea about this uh, structure of the upwelling in this uh, particular uh, uh, region and uh, further we will consider. So now uh, we have talked about the upwelling. Now uh, talked about the upwelling that is fine and these upwellings are mostly during this uh, summer monsoon. So what is the impact of this upwelling and which is uh, on the biology. Biology means the chlorophyll or the phytoplankton abundance. So here again uh, uh, these four boxes from June, July, August and September during the summer monsoon period. Actually you can see during this June when Kelvin waves uh, and uh, the wind stress colors during this are, are also available. So during this first box area here you can see there is a inception of uh, uh, chlorophyll concentrations. So this is the plot which was made uh, available from the MODIS Aqua. MODIS Aqua is a uh, remote sensing slide, uh, remote sensing satellite from uh, US and uh, from the for this chlorophyll uh, imagery we are getting from that. So this is a chlorophyll a uh, image um, where actually in the southern part in the June month you can see there uh, is a availability of good amount of uh, chlorophyll which is the starting phase of the upwelling. Followed by the July you can see that the July actually this upwelling zones actually if, uh, moving towards the north and the chlorophyll or the phytoplankton and is uh, getting more intense in that particular region. However, in the August region, <coughs> August uh, time in this particular region, again this further increment of this uh, phytoplankton is happening. So and the September time actually mostly huge of uh, phytoplanktons are observed in this uh, particular area. So uh, what is the impact of this phyto, uh, this upwelling on the chlorophyll Il, uh, during the summer monsoon time actually that uh, I tried to give in this uh, slide. So uh, this is the work uh, in continuations with uh, uh, Dr. Smita from CMLRE. So now, uh, now I'll just uh, try to give you about uh, the 
डिसअपियरेंस और द सार्डिन डिसअपियरेंस और अपियरेंस ऑफ द सार्डिन सोल ऑल इन द पर्टिकुलर अपलिंग जोन एंड उइथ ए टाइम स्केल एक्चुअली सो वेन इट इज कमिंग टूवर्ड्स कोस्ट एंड वेन इट इज डिसअपियरिंग इन द ऑफ शोर हियर दिस इज ए वेरी गुड वर्क डन बाय डॉक्टर जॉर्ज ग्रीनसन जॉर्ज इन ड्यूरिंग दिस टू ट्वेंटी ट्वेल्व सो ही हैज पुट डाउन एवरी थिंग फ्रॉम द लिटरेचर एंड prepared this slide so you can see there is a up upward uh, these arrows are showing these are basically appearance of sardine souls uh, it is uh, uh, actually described here and when uh, this is the downwards actually so this is the disappearance of sardine uh, sardine souls and uh, here again this is the self break so mostly sardines are available in the within the self uh, break region uh, in this particular area uh, this uh, kinetic re representations of propagations of sardine souls so from the vijinjam to vangul uh, vangurla uh, this is the uh, based on the work of uh, chidambaram 1950 hornell 1910 and uh, their departure in the reverse this reverse is the uh, accumulated uh, representations from the panikkar 1952 so now what actually uh, take home message we got from this uh, uh, literature and from this study actually uh, so from april to september the souls of the spawner or juvenile migrates from offshore migrates from offshore means that beyond 200 meter bathymetry if you consider my uh, my earlier slide so this is the uh, self break region this is basically a 200 meter bath bathymetry contour line here it is mentioned also you see this is the 200 meter bathymetry line which is the self break uh, region so from april to september the souls of the spawner and the juvenile migrates from offshore to inshore all along the west coast so the onset of bloom so all along the west coast means totally all along the west coast uh, uh, this is the onset of the bloom and it is first reported by dr anthony raja in 1972 uh, raja was a very uh, popular uh, fisheries uh, oceanographer uh, from cmfri uh, uh, as per my information so northward migration of sardines happens steadily during the southwest monsoon so uh, during the southwest monsoon on uh, this northward migration also um, uh, starts so here you can see this is the northward migrations the arrow is going towards uh, 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 north so from bijinjam it is in kerala to uh, vangurla uh, so this is towards north this happens during this summer monsoon monsoon time and uh, uh, some uh, southwest monsoon uh, period and re this uh, retrogression from the north to south and the opposite thing just uh, uh, when it is disappearing it is again uh, during this northwest east monsoon time means uh, uh, this winter uh, monsoon uh, monsoon time mostly it is disappearing gradually sardine perform a normal migrations from offshore to the coastal water and vice versa uh, so coinciding with the customary wind conditions that was reported by uh, hornell uh, 1910 so um, this is a, a wind is also impacting this uh, um, this uh, species migrations and uh, this is was reported by hornell during 1910 so the gradual increase in temperature within the range of 26 to 28 degree centigrade is favorable for the inshore migration so 26 degree to 28 degree centigrade is very favorable so this is the uh, temperature actually sardine uh, prefers and uh, with this temperature it is uh, entering in the uh, region during this june july august summer monsoon uh, monsoon time and uh, increasing temperature with the increasing temperature above 29 degree centigrade during march to may they disappear to the deeper water chidambaram uh, in 1950 actually it was reported
now if we put together everything i'll try to give uh, you this uh, available uh, all study and jot down every study and uh, give you a graphical uh, animated uh, representation so thus they mainly spawn in june to july and the matured they become matured at the age of one which is 12 uh, months and the normal lifespan is uh, 2 to 2.5 year so now if uh, we are actually march to uh, checking uh, during this entire period actually entire month uh, year so what is the uh, movement of this species so march to may fish move offshore when uh, near shore temperature is high when near shore temperature is high so what is this near shore at above 29 degree degree is centigrade during the march to may they disappear so this is the march to may actually they are disappearing peak spawning happen and and the fish feed uh, fish move towards this uh, inshore uh, peak spawning during this june july time and fish is moving towards the uh, inshore in that particular time when you can see the background it is actually uh, the chlorophyll concentrations of this picture you can see this is the chlorophyll concentrations so now with the june july that actually chlorophyll concentration is increased and uh, this peak, uh, this is the peak spawning period when uh, this fish is coming for uh, food and this uh, area is available with huge quantity of, of phytoplankton this is the inceptions of the uh, of the upwelling up and uh, you please uh, refer to my earlier slides uh, during this uh, upwelling uh, what is the structure so uh, that is that was the initiation of the upwelling happens and in august fish fishery is in the near shore area you see this is the chlorophyll concentration increase and uh, this is actually uh, again the uh, this chlorophyll phytoplankton concentration is uh, going to high towards north also this northward september northward feeding so they are also migrating towards the north and uh, following the blooms there is a rapid growth of the of the species happening october the same procedure still high rapid growth uh, uh, happens and landings are also available in that uh, in the uh, region high landing and southward so this is the november december this is the time when this is the northeast monsoon this is the winter monsoon started and again the this chlorophyll after this september you can see this uh, october onwards there is a depletion trend of chlorophyll so phytoplanktons are gradually decreasing so basically during this november to december high landings and southward retreat so southward retreat so uh, if you uh, refer to my earlier slide here you can see this is the southwest towards up actually towards uh, up southwest monsoon uh, northward migrations again uh, this is the retreat uh, during this northeast monsoon but uh, keep in mind that always uh, this uh, retreat uh, during this northeast monsoon will be disappearance towards uh, this offshore gradually they will uh, disappear in the offshore region so a high landing southward retreat now january also landings are available february landings are available from the uh, late spawn of the last year zero year uh, from the last year it is there again this cycle starts here fish move offshore march to may totally it is gradually moving towards offshore again the same cycle is uh, continuing so uh, through this animations actually i have tried to give uh, a jot down uh, everything and, and uh, this is actually uh, in terms of chlorophyll in terms of phytoplankton availability and monsoon actually how this species migrates and uh, how disappears from south to south to north how their movement is happening and again uh, how it is disappearing in the offshore region i i try to make you understand so
let us see what are the other parameters about there is a very nice work done recently uh, by Hamza et al. Uh, it is uh, the work uh, mainly focused uh, uh, in uh, uh, actually IITM uh, India uh, that is uh, a institute of MOES. Uh, so what they are saying that salinity and temperature are along with physical indices such as upwelling and mixed layer depth MLD uh, of the ocean help to propose a mechanism to temporal variability of the landing. So again uh, this they are also mentioning that salinity and temperature actually uh, creating uh, having a f uh, this physical indices uh, having a impact of this uh, sardine landing. Colder temperature and timely intense upwelling colder temperature and timely intense upwelling lead to nutrient enrichment what happened if your temperature is cold cold that means nearly about 26 to 28 degree degrees uh, um, this centigrade of temperature that time upwelling process is uh, uh, happening uh, smoothly so if this up upwelling process uh, is happening smoothly then once it is up upwelling that uh, nutrient will be more to that particular region so entire region will be having a huge amount of uh, nutrient so once your nutrients are, are there so that means it is actually promoting the growth of phytoplankton and uh, this phytoplankton if it is there then the food of the indian oil sardine will be available during that particular year and surplus catch will be there so this crucial temperature is the parameter temperature is very crucial so uh, this temp temperature if it is in the optimum level then actually and towards the colder time uh, towards cold uh, means uh, suitable of the phytoplankton to bloom and the nutrient uh, if the physics is uh, happening in uh, well manner physics means that is the upwelling is uh, happening in well manner then actually it is having a direct impact to the biology that means the phytoplankton so the phytoplankton growth will be more thereby the food availability of Indian oil sardine will be more so this happens when the surplus here surplus means here actually what is the average long term average of sardine uh, in the particular area that was calculated so once this is calculated above 20 percent 5 percent so uh, what is the mean from that uh, actually above 20 percent if any year landings are there that year will be considered as a surplus area uh, surplus catch so uh, again the reverse is happening in the case of deficit years so what is the happening again from the mean so your 25 percent reduction in catch or the landing will be pointed out as a uh, deficit year so in that deficit year actually what happens let us see so less uh, saline uh, surface what happens in the less saline surface water and the uh, soling of mld so mixed layer depth so when the less saline water is uh, uh, above water is uh, saline uh, less saline uh, surface water soling of mld is happening mean mixed layer depth is uh, going uh, mixed layer depth uh, soling is happening that time actually aggregation of fish at particular depth thereby good catch so this this is the uh, outcome so MLD if it is soling then again nutrients entrainments are happening so basically this is uh, what the uh, their point uh, it is pointed out the reasons has have been given here so for the upwelling so if upwellings are there for nutrients will be more why upwellings are there good MLD is so if so soling up so if MLD is coming up nutrient entrainment to the surface will be more so once the nutrient entrainment on the surface will be more then uh, this is actually lead, lead, leading nutrient to come to the surface and uh, phytoplankton will be more and good catch in a particular depth 
the reverse mechanism is happening uh, in the uh, deficit years so such as more surface saline water wa wa warm surface water is more saline warm temperature warm temperature means the temperature going beyond 29 degree centigrade downwelling or weak upwelling is happening so if downwelling is happening or weak upwelling is happening so nutrient enrichment less uh, quantity of in, in, in nutrient enrichment will be there leads to the deficit landing why if your nutrient enrichment is less then your phytoplankton bloom will be less so once your phytoplankton bloom will be less this species will not get ample amount of food so once your ample amount of food is uh, uh, not available in that uh, particular area fish growth will be hampered and recruitment also will be hampered uh, so the uh, this is the mainly the cause of this uh, deficit so it is not only uh, creating problem to the recent years it is actually hugely impacting the next year uh, stock also now uh, they are also say, talking about some uh, uh, this uh, um, remote forcing like uh, this enso is having a huge impact uh, southern oscillation in southern oscillation is having a, a uh, good uh, impact on this species migration so uh, including that also pacific decadal oscillations and atlantic multi decadal oscillations have more pronounced impact on the uh, indian oil sharding landing over the coast of southeastern arabian sea then enso so uh, uh, up to this actually uh, i have tried to give you about the background and about uh, uh, the um, uh, work already done so this is the base work actually uh, to understand you uh, to to make you understand about the uh, sardine uh, biology and the ecological preferences and uh, the dynamics of uh, this uh, um, probable cause or ecological indicators which are important uh, basically for this uh, uh, sardine stock analysis so this is uh, i try to make you understand through the, up to this then next actually i will be talking about um, a little bit give you a glimpse about uh, the collaborations between uh, indian uh, government with the noa so mainly mos ministry of art sciences has a collaborations with uh, noa so this is for the uh, marine fishery advisory service and harmful algal bloom prediction system in indian seas so uh, this is a, a very nice picture actually for, for a joint picture from our indian colleagues uh, as well as from uh, us colleagues uh, all are in, uh, in one of the workshop uh, here in india so um, uh, this uh, workshop is uh, this uh, collaboration is now more than 5 uh, years and it is continuing i think from uh, 2013 onwards so what is the uh, actually this uh, uh, out of this what is the uh, outcome of this uh, collaboration so basically the problem is that if uh, we are having the informations uh, with the ecological indicators for analyzing for giving some uh, justifications of uh, the particular year deficit or surplus there uh, actually lot of good work already done now with the help of this knowledge actually whether this can be converted to a good prediction system which is operational in nature every year uh, operationally whether we can give a, a good uh, prediction uh, for the upcoming year so that will be a big achievement so for that purpose actually this collaboration is going on i'll uh, give you some of that uh, brief idea about uh, this how this uh, collaboration is working so this is a uh, continuous underway uh, fish exemplar so this is popularly known as uh, qfish it is uh, uh, actually 
now installed in one of the MOES uh, fishing vessel. It's called uh, this uh, Sagar Sampada, uh, which is uh, managed by Similari, uh, so Center for Marine Living Resource and Ecology in uh, Cochin. So basically what is this uh, sampler is doing, this is a continuous underway uh, fish egg sampler is a new instrument used to study the distribution of fish eggs from a moving ship. Now uh, why uh, we are into this uh, cubes? It is basically uh, when we are linking these uh, landings with the parameters we can get some broad idea about the species but the most lagging things are that georeference fish catch data are av not available to get the idea about actually where exactly species fish is uh, uh, aggregating from which location fishermen are getting where actually exactly where uh, these fish species are available so what sagar sampada or moes uh, uh, ship is doing they are having their uh, sagar sampada is having uh, its uh, regular uh, actually uh, research uh, voyage so if these cubes are fitted so we will get some idea about the where basically which location these species are spawning so with the help of these uh, cubes we can get idea which location more spawning uh, is happening which location they are not spawning to get the idea about the fish abundance so distribution of uh, so what is uh, actually what are the component it consists of uh, a hull mount with submersible pump so uh, sample seawater uh, this is the hull mount uh, of uh, this is the hull hull mount of uh, this uh, submersible pump it is uh, actually water is pumped continuously from fixed depth and it is entering into this concentrator so uh, from here actually it is going uh, to this uh, optical plankton counter then ultimately it is coming to the mechanical uh, sampler so fish samples are uh, collected then uh, what is the quantity those informations actually uh, without uh, me mechanical involvement automatically uh, or semi automatically it can be performed with the help of cubes that is the reason actually cubes uh, was installed uh, in FORB uh, Sagar Sampada eggs uh, are similar size particles are uh, retained in the sample collector which is basically retaining in the sample collector and cubes operate continuously uh, when uh, sea uh, in any uh, sea conditions so when ship is moving uh, or any sea conditions actually this uh, water will be pumped in uh, to the ship and uh, from here actually easily uh, this uh, with the help of uh, optical plankton counter or uh, and uh, uh, this uh, plankton counter also and with this uh, mechanical uh, sample collector actually we can get idea about the um, egg concentrations in the um, uh, in spatial and temporal level also so uh, this is the uh, slide actually one of the major uh, yeah, to give you some idea about the which are the uh, popular uh, spawning ground so this is the slide shared by uh, Melari. so this is the kannur area calicut area velapad area trivandrum area these are the popular uh, actually um, uh, spawning grounds where uh, sardine is actually spawning during this summer monsoon. Now uh, uh, actually how we are working uh, in this area towards development of this operational forecasting. So this is uh, a study area uh, we have uh, uh, made small small little grids so here you can see there is a area of uh, uh, coastal grids and there is a area of uh, offshore grids so the coastal grids are mainly uh, in the, uh, the in the near shore region in the up to the optical uh, up to the uh, this uh, self break 
and this offshore grid 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 actually this is uh, in the uh, offshore grid and so there are some re reference grid for other actually 11, 9, 13, 12 so these grids are there. So strong temperature differential between the near shore and offshore and high primary productivity and surface chlorophyll in uh, June to September, primary productivity subsides after uh, September, whereas the mesozooplankton's abundance increase and remain high in the post-monsoon period. So this is the sum uh, of the findings actually from the uh, this uh, actually study we are, are getting. So now what is the objective? So this is the objective the, to develop a predictable capability of sardine in Indian seas and uh, this is the sardine prediction system where actually uh, we have planned to make it uh, ecosystem in uh, ecosystem approach so these are the ecosystem ind indicators available um, so what are the ecosystem indicators available so these are uh, need to be uh, parameterized so once the indicators are parameterized these habitat suitability modeling modeling need to be done and once the habitat suitability modeling will be done so then validations data management considering these all aspects stock assessment anthropogenic stress assessment environmental and climate variability and socio-economic uh, um, aspects also need to be keep in mind so this is uh, in collaborations with NOAA and NMFS actually we are con uh, continuing. So yesterday there was a question that whether we are ha having uh, similar kind of uh, prediction system uh, what NOAA follows. So we are trying to develop uh, a similar kind of uh, uh, advisory e prediction system so in collaborations with NOAA scientists. So uh, again this is a graphical representations of what actually we are planning. So this is the observation, so continuous observations we are planning and this is the concepts conceptual model uh, we are planning. So once this conceptual mo model is developed based on this knowledge and intuitions then a new, with the help of numerical and computational facility numerical model can be developed. Once your numerical models are developed par parameters are optimized then fitted model uh, uh, will be developed so once these fitted models are developed so basically with the help of these observations actually uh, fitting performance can be done and uh, based on this fitted model actually predictions of uh, uh, the species level but now we need to keep in mind that uh, ecological indicators are not always similar uh, it is not always similar uh, the weightage is not always similar uh, in year uh, to year wise uh, and also it is uh, seasonal wise also weightages are different so uh, for a particular uh, prediction system one single model can't be uh, give, can't give you a, a good uh, predictions so which is having less error so multiple models uh, as per the need uh, of the uh, season actually need to be developed so independent observations will be there these independent observes, uh, observations will help to the performance test of the model and validations and fine tuning will be done uh, to improve the prediction system so with this uh, actually infrastructure uh, we are trying to develop this kind of uh, uh, prediction system which will be operational in nature considering all the parameters which is uh, uh, basically important for uh, species migration to understand the species migrations and uh, species uh, appearance and disappearance pattern. Now what are the uh, little bit uh, I'll give you uh, the first stage of uh, uh, this uh, uh, model which is experimentally we are trying to develop and uh, two covariates uh, so it is explained the catch variation and improved prediction so 2.5 year average regional SST SST is playing a 
key role and the precipitations over land precipitations over land uh, during june to july is also playing a key role towards the development of this uh, model during this summer monsoon time the most significant re relationship was between sst uh, covariate and post monsoon landing and models with the second best covariate is precipitations over the land uh, land during the monsoon with very minimum prediction year so when uh, with the help of sst and with the help of uh, precipitations actually um, we can develop uh, a, a model so uh, also other parameters actually are there there are multiple models i'll just uh, uh, given two examples of the parameters which are uh, very important very cru crucial uh, parameters in the model so uh, mostly i have come to the end of uh, my slide so just uh, in the nutshell actually if we want to wrap so just keep in mind here you can see that what is the outcome of this uh, uh, entire presentations what are the parameters really important so the really important parameters are this is the uh, uh, sst and uh, this is the sst and the red one is the near shore sst and the black one is the offshore sst and chlorophyll a concentrations for development of such a uh, type of prediction model actually like this these parameters you have to identify you can see it is actually how this near shore and offshore sst is uh, varying uh, uh, this year wise 2010 to 2013 actually uh, i have showed you uh, want to uh, give you the idea so wherever the drop of sst is there the uh, significant amount of chlorophyll uh, is uh, increasing that means phytoplankton bloom is increasing so once this phytoplankton blooms are increased then automatically your somatic growth will be increasing and your recruitment uh, in the particular uh, year or the next year will be much more well, however you can see this is the rise of uh, temperature happens in the um, after april may and uh, during the drop is uh, during the summer monsoon time again uh, half uh, here so this type of uh, oh, oh, actually oscillations will be there so and if it is uh, happening it is the regular if it is matching with this uh, chlorophyll concentration then prediction system is problem but uh, no problem but uh, sometimes what happen these parameters changes due to some um, uh, external events or remote forcings then prediction system running is a very much problem so here this is the uh, down graph is chlorophyll and uh, here in this uh, right up uh, side actually this is the concentrations of chlorophyll i hope uh, from this uh, actually you have got a, a glimpse about this uh, existing study uh, what uh, already done in india about uh, the lot of scientists has worked very good work already done but need to be you know, all good work all the parameters need to be put together and uh, towards the development of a prediction system so which will be robust in nature and uh, it is uh, not a small work so it is actually a regular continuation of work and the model will gradually uh, develop and upgrade uh, with the obser observations it is not a, a single time observations we did or, or uh, we developed a model a need for that actually focused r and d need to be uh, um, carry forward so i hope uh, you have uh, 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 i am able to give you some glimpse let us check uh, actually what are the questions came today so uh, i'll be trying to uh, give you uh, some glimpse uh, and uh, answer it and future also i'll give sir give us a temperature variation in ocean according to two distance is the information on this uh, this um, ocean to this uh, seasonal so there is a questions about the temperature uh, variations uh, related to uh, sardine so uh, the coastal uh, area i'll give you in one of my slide it is there uh, 
So uh, a gradual increase in temperature within the uh, range of 26 degree to 28 degree Celsius centigrade is favorable for these inshore migrations. So, but what happens? This sometimes uh, when your rainfall during the summer monsoon soon are not uh, actually um, uh, proper, so the temp temperature will rise. So, if it is going up. 29 degree centigrade so it is again problematic for this this species and uh, so summer monsoon time if rainfall is more uh, rainfall is as per the uh, regular rainfall then automatically this temperature will uh, go down otherwise if uh, temperatures are uh, this rainfall is not more so then uh, uh, this uh, rainfall uh, will be uh, rainfall will be uh, not not normal then temperature will increase is information on the seasonal variation of fish available to the uh, fishermen if yes how to avoid massive fishing activity that may <laughs> lead to uh, uh, over fishing so uh, this is actually is this information is informations of the seasonal variations so they are very much aware of this uh, these things but uh, still livelihood is involved so that's why this uh, actually this coastal uh, fishing is uh, in place but uh, this is a policy question how to avoid massive fishing uh, so activity that may lead to over fishing so basically uh, we are also not encouraging this coastal uh, fishing so that's why if we we consider this our uh, potential fishing zone advisories so our uh, pfz lines potential fishing zones lines uh, if it is uh, coming towards uh, more near the coast actually we are trying to uh, avoid those lines so which will in turn actually reduce the uh, overcrowding in the coastal uh, area and it will also uh, force fishermen to do fishing in the uh, beyond the near shore region can we continue uh, can again another question is there can we uh, continue ensuring colder temperature of the sea so that this will boost nutrient that promotes the growth of uh, phytoplankton for food source uh, uh, for sardine food source yeah excuse me okay one second just Can we continue uh, ensuring the uh, the colder temperature of the sea so that uh, this will boost to the nutri nutrient enrichment? That the this question is uh, depending upon uh, our. So the question is that can we ensuring the colder temperature of the sea so that this will boost the nutrient enrichment uh, that promotes the growth of uh, phytoplankton for food source uh, uh, for sardines so basically the normal phenomena which is uh, in practice that is in the ideal situations so if anthropogenic pressures and uh, this uh, imp not impacting the climate then automatically your normal phenomena will be continuing and there will not be any problem so basically uh, what i uh, will say that uh, it is depending upon us only so if uh, this pressure anthropogenic pressures are normal then automatically the ideal conditions will continue and the normal phenomena will continue so the pollutions will not be there the abnormalities will not be there this normal phenomena will continue climate change will not be there so uh, this process will continue and we can ensure a sustainable nature so it is depending upon us only how we are, are managing our resource 
I would like to know how potential fishing grounds predicted from fisheries oceanographic science has been confirmed in the field uh, in India. So one of the friend has uh, asked that I would like to know how potential fishing ground prediction from fisheries oceanographic science has been confirmed in the field in India. So this is the first class uh, actually uh, Indian Marine Fishery Advisory Service which I uh, have talked uh, in the first uh, day uh, that means in the 16th morning session. So please go through it uh, just uh, to answer your question in uh, uh, brief. So basically with the help of remote sensing technique that is uh, sea surface temperature imagery and with the ocean color uh, actually images. So there is a po advisory uh, popularly known as potential fishing zone advisory which is operational uh, in India and regularly Inquis is providing these uh, advisories to the fishermen all along the coast in all maritime states including uh, our uh, island territory like Andaman, Nicobar and uh, Lakshadweep. What is the So what is the exact uh, reason for the oil sardine uh, uh, to northern latitudes? So basically there is a good uh, work done by uh, AMPA, uh, this uh, CMFRI, Central Marine Fishery Research Institutes, about, uh, based on, you can go through their publications, but uh, the what they are saying that uh, the, the in increasing uh, temperature in the southern latitude which leads uh, this species to migrate towards towards north. Uh, the details of uh, the presentations are uh, available in uh, uh, CMFRI websites and uh, in uh, internet also. Uh, the concerned scientists, uh, there are a lot of uh, scientists actually worked on that and very good work has been done. Please, uh, is there any advisory service available regarding advanced information about harmful in uh, bloom in coastal area? It caused huge loss to the coastal fisheries. Yes, presently these harmful algal bloom advisories are available from India uh, and uh, it is hosted by uh, uh, inquiries only. So this is the outcome of our collaboration so with uh, uh, NOAA Fisheries also. So you can check our uh, website to get idea about this harmful algal bloom prediction system. In uh, last questions I'll address, try to address. Can you explain more about uh, the two? Uh, so I need clarifications about the chlorophyll increasing effect and phytoplankton on life cycle of oil sardine. So there is a question I need uh, some more uh, clarifications about uh, the chlorophyll increasing effect of phytoplankton on life cycle of oil sardine. So I'll just uh, again uh, with this uh, question I'll just go again to my slide. So, is my slide is uh, uh, visible? So uh, there is a question that uh, uh, how this uh, chlorophyll is increasing and uh, with the help of upwelling. So as it is the uh, one of the major component of uh, uh, my presentation, I will just uh, go through again. I will repeat this uh, this portion 
and with this actually i'll be ending uh, today's uh, session so now the schematic this is the schematic representations of different upwelling zones in india here you can see these are the rossby waves so these are the two, 200 meter uh, bathymetric contour then 1000 meter bathymetric contour 2000 meter bathymetric contour now the schematic representations of different upwelling zones classified according to the uh, formation of mechanism so the the entire upwelling zone is here so these upwelling zones we have divided into three parts so one is uh, uh, here down portion this is the second portion and this is the third portion so arrow along the coast represent these are the uh, kelvin waves the coast along the coast and westward directed black arrows depict the rossby waves so these are the rossby waves so the phase velocity of rossby waves is uh, actually decreasing when moves from uh, south to north it is the phase velocity of the rossby wave is decreasing upwelling at area one is strongly wind driven so this is strongly wind driven area so uh, the area two is a shadow zone uh, where the upwelling is uh, weak and uh, upwelling at area three uh, area three means this area is uh, actually uh, well uh, very well and which is due to remote forcing as well as wind stress uh, wind stress now uh, in continuation with earlier slide if you see this is the 8 degree to 9 degree uh, latitude band 8 degree to 9 degree latitude band uh, the, to the influence of the remote forcing on the upwelling this is the shadow zone basically where the upwelling remote forcing and uh, remote forcing and the upwelling is very less uh, so moderate and uh, relatively intense upwelling occurs along the column from 9 degree north towards 13 degree north up to this point uh, Kollam to Mangalore coast uh, due to the combined uh, action of longshore and wind stress the coastally, uh, coastally trapped Kelvin waves and the offshore propagations of the Ros Rosby waves this region is actually upwelling is very much uh, uh, very much intense so north of this 13 to north uh, north to 15th north uh, actually upwelling is uh, less very less here once your upwelling is weak to weak uh, the it is basically uh, co confined in the coastal area in, uh, zone so here uh, what happens june to july uh, june to september actually you can see the due to the starting of the upwelling here the concentration of chlorophyll is uh, observed significantly then july month this is extinct uh, this is extending uh, towards north also and august month it is increasing more so again in september the concentrations of the phytoplanktons are more likewise in the summer monsoon time actually these concentrations of chlorophyll is much more which is due to actually uh, upwelling uh, what uh, is triggering this phytoplankton once your upwellings are there may mld is uh, 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 this uh, sole uh, soling of MLD is happening your nutrient is in in uh, enrichment is happening means entrainment of nutrient happening to the surface once your nutrients are in the entrainment is happening then your phytoplankton blo is blooming so this is the mechanism about the upwelling and uh, chlorophyll I hope uh, this uh, presentation actually uh, you uh, uh, people uh, actually understood and uh, it is uh, I just wanted to give you the brief about this uh, sardine thing uh, and uh, what was the uh, how we should think uh, to parameterize all ecological indicators which can develop a good prediction system which is operational in nature so uh, thank you for joining and uh, hope you will continue uh, uh, staying with us in the inquest channel and uh, with this this is my the end lecture uh, in the series and uh, again my colleagues uh, will be joining at three o'clock and uh, stay tuned with the inquest channel and thank you for joining thank you very much